What happens when a popular rock radio DJ retires, sells everything, and with his wife, takes off in an RV to see America? Ho, ho, ho! It's the Rockin' the RV Life podcast with Jeff and Patty. Join them each week as they share their experiences while giving you advice and tips along the way. Well, thank you again for joining us on our journey. It's been one year since we took off in an RV and just started to tour America, see all the cool places. Do you ever think you'd live in an RV for a year? No. (laughs) And when you really think about it, this is not the biggest RV in the world. This is a 30-foot RV. Mm -hmm. There's RVs that are 40 feet, 45 feet long. I know. They're They're like a little condo there's all these towables people have trailers that they look like miniature houses right but here we are in a 30-foot rv Mm -hmm. so why are we still doing this why have we been able to exist in this and get along for an entire year i know isn't that a good question maybe it's the excitement of going to another place Mm -hmm. maybe it's the excitement of feeling like you're on vacation all the time but you're really not you're really not i mean you have to treat it as a business Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there's a lot to this right and that's one thing we want to talk about in these podcasts everything all the good things we've seen and done and all the upside to this but also there is a bad side there's a dark side to this as well and you got to be prepared for it one of which the cost of everything oh, the cost we spent in one year seven thousand dollars on gasoline for the rv well it was nice when we started out the gas yeah. was like about a dollar eighty a gallon in, right in ohio but and man. that's we kind of figured that okay two dollars a gallon and we would do our budgeting on that right and but, of course the price you know. of gasoline has gone through the roof yeah and then when you get out to the west coast it's four dollars and 69 cents a uh, gallon oh it's just you it have, hurts <laughs> it does hurt and yeah. you have to adapt yeah and when you adapt for us it means maybe staying in place for mm-hmm. longer periods right so we're using less gas right. we're kind of spreading out that mm-hmm. cost and uh, not driving with the air conditioner on mm-hmm. <laughs> you know things like that yeah. now as far as where we stayed because you're going to have to stay somewhere every night right whether yeah. it's a parking lot of lowe's or the cracker barrel which are free mm-hmm. or state parks national parks koas yep RV resorts. Yep. Mm -hmm. All of that. Mm -hmm. It all adds up. It does. What would you say is the average cost of an RV park? Probably anywhere from fifty to sixty dollars a night. I know we get into some. Yeah, it is. It's that's about the average, fifty, sixty to a night. And there are some that are in the Mm forties, and you can go to the state parks, and they're usually in the twenties or Mm thirties. Except not in California. Oh yeah, that's right. In California, the state parks are like sixty. Yeah. $65. $65. And no hookups. Well, some of them do, though. Some have full hookups. Some don't. And when we talk about hookups, we're talking about a water connection, an electrical connection, mm-hmm. and a sewer, sewer connection. connection. Yeah. Now, some places only give you water and electricity and not the sewer. Mm-hmm. And they have what they call a dump station where you can dump your sewage tank if you want. And others have all full service. Mm-hmm. Some are 50 amps. Some are 30 amps. Some mm-hmm. are 20 amps. Yeah. So it depends on your rig and your comfort zone. Yep. But there are a lot of places. I mean, the spectrum is just really wide as to what the price is and what you're going to see and what you're going to get. For example, we stayed at Doc Weiler RV Park right on the ocean in Los Angeles. Now, that was $75 a night just for being right on the beach. Right. Which isn't bad for California because then you go to Malibu, Malibu Beach RV Park, we didn't stay there. No. But that's $127 a night for an ocean view. And the weekends are higher, 133 on the weekends. And I think why Dockweiler was lower priced is because of the jets taking off at LAX fly right over you. But it's also a state park. <laughs> that's true. Yes, yeah. with the full hookups, which is really nice. And then you've got New Orleans mm-hmm. staying on the river. That was $90 a night. Oh, my God. You didn't tell me it was 90 bucks a night. <laughs> I did, too. No. But it was worth it, you know, because it was so beautiful. I know it was. You know, and then you can go to Bozeman, Montana. We stayed at the Bear Canyon right. RV Resort, and that was $81 a night. Everybody loves Montana. It depends on the place. Uh-huh. It really depends on the place where you want to stay. If it's in high demand, mm-hmm. prices are going to be higher. Yeah. If it's on the weekend. And if it's Hilton Head, oh, gosh, that was tough. 125 a night. But there was a reason for that. Yeah, there was. 
was. But then again, you know, there's parks that are $30 a night or $40 a night, or you can stay free. So it all balances out. It all averages out. We are going to do a future episode on all the parks, all the places you can stay, all the rules and regulations, yeah, we'll all have... the prices, everything. Right. We'll have to talk about all that. How much did we spend on campsites last year? We spent actually just over $12,000. Wow. For the year on campsites. Yeah. I guess it's about 1000 a month. Yeah. And we could do better. This year we're going to do better. We're going to do better this year because we analyze our costs. And that's mm-hmm. something that you really have to do when you do this. Unless, of course, you're filthy rich and you, know, yeah. you don't have anything to care about. Well, right. that's okay. You yeah, know? right. And I wish I was. Right. <laughs> but... A thousand dollars a month means we spent an average of about thirty-three dollars a night, mm-hmm. which is not bad. Not bad to average out, yeah. Right. When it comes to RVing full time, we found out it costs more than we had anticipated. Definitely. You're buying food. Yeah. We don't eat in restaurants very Once much. Once in a while, we go out to dinner. Not too right. often. Mm -hmm. But you could go crazy. You could go to a new city and just, oh, I got to try this restaurant. And the next thing you know, you know, it adds up. It does. It really does. So you got to be careful. And we track our expenses. And that's something you should do, too. Right. If you do this. Right. We track everything. Mm -hmm. Another thing, too, uh, when it comes to RVs and trailers and everything, this is something I wanted to discuss. It's a safety issue. And that is your tire ratings. And you should even know this about your car. What is the speed rating of your tire? And what is the weight rating of your tire? Mm -hmm. We see a lot of people on the side of the road with tire problems. We also see a lot of people blow by us on the freeway. I mean, we're doing 70. Our tires are rated at 75. Mm -hmm. And we have top of the line tires for this RV. But we see people blow by us 80, 85 miles an hour. Those are the ones with the pickup trucks pulling the trailers. Yeah, a lot of them are just flying. Yeah, right. (laughs) And you have to be careful because a blowout on a trailer or an RV will also cause collateral damage. Mm -hmm. It can ruin brake lines. Always be aware of that. Anyway, getting back to business here. We were in Los Angeles and we were visiting our daughter. It was really great. Then we decided to leave because the pandemic and everybody was shutting Mm -hmm. everything down. And this was last year, last Christmas. We decided to go to the mountains, Mm -hmm. kind of get a break from the city. We went to Idlewild, which was really a great place. Mm -hmm. Idlewild is a town up on top of a mountain just outside of Los Angeles. Right. So it's a really cute little town, Mm kind of rustic. So we just had to disconnect the car to get up the hill because the poor RV was struggling and people are lining up behind us. What's going on? You're going 25 miles an hour. Yeah. It was pretty funny, but we loved that. Then we found our way to Palm Springs again. We like Palm Springs a lot, and there's a camp that we stay at there that we really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And... Well, right right next door happened to be an RV dealership. Patty had this great (laughs) idea. I said, let's just go look. Let's, let's just see what they've got. Go and just look. Do you know what that means? <laughs> well, we went and we looked. <laughs> uh-huh. And I have to admit, I was the first one to say, you know, maybe we ought to test drive this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that time we did. We test drove it first. But we did find an RV that we really felt fit all our needs. Yeah, we really liked it mm-hmm. a lot. It was a new Mar Bay Star, mm-hmm. 30 foot. And had a lot of bells and whistles. Mm-hmm. It had the Rand McNally GPS, which is really nice. Yep. And you can have that on, put in your route, and if you drive six miles over the speed limit, suddenly the voice comes on and says, speed warning, speed yeah. warning. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, yeah. it's pretty accurate. <laughs> she does. She keeps an eye on us. <laughs> yeah, she really does. <laughs> It also has some really nice audio systems. Mm -hmm. We have a Bose system that we really enjoy on the TV, and we also have another audio system uh, where we drive it in the cockpit there. It's nice to have good music on or some podcasts. Mm -hmm. It also has a dashboard that doesn't come off. Right. (laughs) (laughs) It has a big shower. Oh, yeah. The old one, the shower was so small, you could barely turn around in it. So it had a lot of bells and whistles, new technology, and we decided to buy it. Mm -hmm. And we took it back to the RV park. Two more. Mornings later. Woke up. Mm -hmm. There was water on the floor. Yeah. A lot of water. Mm -hmm. And it feels really bad when you're in your socks and you step in sopping wet carpeting. Mm -hmm. That was not a good experience. No. It was actually the ice maker. Mm -hmm. 
somebody had not hooked up the line to the ice maker behind the refrigerator so it was dripping down behind it right. and underneath underneath the cabinets and coming out yeah so we took it back to uh, the dealership on yeah. the day that we were going to leave for arizona right and they fixed it mm -hmm. and off we went yep mm -hmm. now little did we know that was just the tip of the iceberg right <laughs> but on to arizona we went to phoenix mm -hmm. and you picked out a really cool place called apache junction oh i know i love the name of that town oh, oh my, my god gosh. it's a great place to go put it on your bucket list because the superstition mountains uh, are there yeah they're about 40 miles east of phoenix mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those are about 6200 feet high yeah yep and they'll get snow on them on the top mm -hmm. it's kind of rare because it's in phoenix but right. it's very rare but when we were there they happened to get it and everybody was so excited they were lining up on the road with pictures. their cameras yep. taking pictures of it remember that show? <laughs> it was really crazy yeah, yeah. but uh -huh. the superstition mountains are awesome and the state parks in arizona oh are well the incredible. yep the superstition mountain has the lost dutchman state park right yeah it's it beautiful. takes a year you have to have a reservation. We couldn't get in. It was all booked. A year <laughs> it in was advance. So booked up. Sometimes you can get cancellations, and you do all this on your computer or your cell phone, mm -hmm. and you can sneak in with a cancellation. Right. But for the most part, it's booked up. It really is. A year in advance. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. Uh, it's called the Lost Dutchman State Park because legend has it there's a rich gold mine hidden somewhere in there right yeah they figure the gold mine is worth about 200 million dollars yeah and the lost dutchman was this guy back in the 1800s he was a german immigrant and he had discovered this mm -hmm. and never told anybody the location i was reading about this he made a map like a crude map and he gave it to the woman that was taking care of him before he died in his old they, age yeah and they still couldn't find it no with the crude map to this day <laughs> nobody has found the lost dutchman gold mine yeah. and people look for it all the time yeah they're still the, looking for it they are and mm -hmm. people have died doing mm -hmm. this they've been looking for it jeff since 1892 and it's funny when we hike the area it's always in the back of my mind you know i wonder if this yeah, mine is around could here be. wouldn't that be fun right but anyhow after that we went to tucson but before we got to tucson we <gasps> went to a state park that oh, knocked us out and i can yes. barely pronounce it correctly it's picacho peak state right. park and there is a hike oh. there that is just incredible it's called the hunter's trail mm -hmm. the hunter's trail hike and oh my gosh it goes up picacho peak up this mountain it is so tough they tell you to bring gloves mm -hmm. because there are places that they've put cables in yeah to help you climb up and and some of these steps help, and bring and you, down. you go down oh right. yeah and it yeah. is it is an unbelievable hike yeah but the park itself is absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. but if you do that hike if you ever go there be sure you take enough water right and snacks because yeah. it is it's a tough hike it's tough and then when you get to the top oh oh the view is amazing it really is just beautiful i remember driving into the park we have ohio license oh, plates yeah. uh -huh. and i used to be a morning disc jockey on a radio station in cleveland and one of the rangers noticed our Ohio plates and said, hey, I'm from Ohio. Mm -hmm. I'm from Brunswick. Mm -hmm. It was the ranger that was checking us in. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's a suburb of Cleveland. Yeah. And she notices my name and goes, I know who you I are. I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, it was cute. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And that's just north of Tucson into tucson we went mm -hmm. we had a lot of fun in tucson it's a great city and there's a lot of things to do in and around the tucson area yes oh there's mount lemon mount lemon Ooh, that's a beautiful drive it, it's incredible yep that one you drive up <laughs> yeah you drive up that uh -huh. and it's like one of oh. these drives where every five minutes you, you gotta stop, stop. The, yeah you take pictures yeah you gotta look and stop it's so yep. pretty but one thing that we've found while we're traveling are the people you meet mm -hmm. we have met some of the nicest some of the most unique some of the most amazing characters you yeah. can imagine there was one couple that we met lincoln and jackie really oh, really fun man. people. they were so nice they were so fun he was a former homicide detective in titusville florida mm -hmm. and she was a trauma nurse mm -hmm. 
And the stories they would tell. Yeah. Ooh. She was on the front line of COVID. Yeah, she was. In New York. Yeah, she really And he was on the front line of crime. Yes. But they had a couple of motorcycles. Interesting. They did. They had Honda motorcycles. I didn't even know Honda made motorcycles. Oh, Honda makes everything. I didn't know that. That was really cool. But they had Honda motorcycles, Uh and they were really laid out. They had the heated handlebar grips. Yeah. They also had the heated seats. And Lincoln, he's tall. He's got broad shoulders. And he wears a top hat. Yeah. And he drives this motorcycle. Yeah. But on the back of the motorcycle is something special. Yes. Lincoln and Jackie have a little dog, and they have a pouch on the back of his motorcycle that the dog sits in. Just his head sticks out. Right. And it's so cute. The dog loves it. The dog goes off with them on their motorcycle rides. They don't leave home without the dog. (laughs) That's right. So the dog is part of the setup. Yeah. And there was also another couple that we met there. Mm -hmm. Randy and Sandy. Randy and Sandy. (laughs) Yeah. Really nice people. They were from Idaho. Mm -hmm. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, right? Coeur d'Alene. Yes. Nice, nice people. Yeah, good folks. So you meet a lot of great people. You You stay in touch with them. Yep. And with Instagram and Facebook, it's really great to be able to do that and by the way around the tucson area there's plenty of places to explore Mm -hmm. well remember we went to karchner cavern state park oh wow we stayed there for a couple of nights a great place yeah lots of hiking it was so pretty in the hills and the caverns we couldn't get in to see the caverns because it was already filled up Mm -hmm. but and because of the pandemic there weren't that many tickets available so we missed that you might want to schedule that ahead of time if you go there Mm -hmm. it's fantastic these guys discovered these caverns back in the late 50s they were crawling around in the desert in the mountains and they crawl into these caves this one guy crawled in about 200 feet i mean they got rattlesnakes scorpions tarantulas how they did that (laughs) but they found these amazing caverns yeah and we were able to stay in the state park there it's great and then while we were at the state park we took a day drive down to tombstone Tombstone? and bisbee yeah tombstone's the town of the old west you know wyatt earp and all those guys and they still play it up there really, really well. Oh, what a great town. Yeah, it was yeah, fun. Yeah, it was really cool. And then, of course, Bisbee just passed there. Bisbee has this European feel to it. It does. It was an old mining town. They mm-hmm. had discovered copper. One thing about Arizona and southern Arizona, the minerals were usually found on the surface. I mean, these guys would be walking around. They'd find nuggets of gold, mm-hmm. copper, and that's how these mining towns took off. Yeah. It's a cute town. If you ever get that way, you've got to go. Go to Bisbee. Well, we had to get back on the road. We left Tucson to head to Ohio because I needed to renew my driver's license. And we had a new RV. And you could actually register your RV in any state that you want, mm-hmm. depending on you know your residency. Right. So we were going to head back to Ohio. I'll tell you more why we chose Ohio and not South Dakota or mm-hmm. Texas, where a lot of people say, well, you pay less taxes. Mm-hmm. But there was a reason that we decided to come back to Ohio and register our vehicle. And we'll tell you a little bit later on. Mm-hmm. Off to New Mexico. Oh, yeah. It was beautiful. Went to White Sands National that Park. That was beautiful. Knocked yes. us out. Yep. Love that. There's a KOA that we stayed at Mm -hmm. in In Las Las Cruces Cruces. Mm -hmm. that overlooks the city. Yes. If you go there, stay there. Yes. You will love it. When it gets dark out and the lights come on, oh, what a beautiful view out the RV. We stopped in uh, Texas, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Oh, New Orleans. We stayed at Pontchartrain Landing which is right at the mouth of Lake Pontchartrain. It's gorgeous. Yes. It's like on a river. There was an old river boat across yeah. from us. Yeah. Absolutely. That was really... Gorgeous. And the restaurant. Remember the restaurant they had oh, there at the RV park? I'll tell you. If you can't find good delicious. food in New Orleans, mm-hmm. there's something wrong with you. Yeah. It's very rare to have a restaurant in an RV park. And that one did. It was really fun. And it was a great restaurant. Mm -hmm. Then we headed down the Gulf Coast to Florida. We have a couple of friends. Uh, My newsman, Ed Esposito, who worked with me for eight years, him and his wife, Diane, live in the villages in Florida. Now, I've never been to the villages. Yeah. It's a big retirement community. It was the first time that I was, oh my gosh, what a place. Yeah. It was nice. It was rocking. I almost said, Jeff, let's just. (laughs) <laughs> stop and stay here for good you sell know? the rv and live <laughs> that in was florida. close it was close i loved it there after florida we headed up the east coast mm-hmm. one place that we stopped hilton head right there was a reason for that right there was a reason twin reasons <laughs> i married a twin 
Patty has an identical twin sister named Peggy. Twins are amazing. There's a nuance between them that you just can't describe. They think alike. They call each other at the same time. They finish each other's <laughs> sentences and sometimes plan to be in the same spot at the same time without telling each other. Right. I mean, when I was making plans to go up the East Coast, my twin was planning to go to Hilton Head Island. It wasn't like she knew I was coming, and it wasn't like I knew she was going to be there at that time. So it was really interesting. We wouldn't have stopped. So at one point I said to her, now, when are you going to be in Hilton Head? And she gave me the date. And I looked at my plans, and that was right when we were going by Hilton Head. Right. So we had to stop there yes, and we make did. a reservation. We normally wouldn't have. It's expensive. Oh, yeah. It is expensive to, and, to go to an RV park on Hilton Head. And, of course, I had to stay right on the island because right. I wanted to be down the street from her condo right. where she was renting. So, um, yeah, it, it was expensive as hell, but <laughs> it was worth it. We had a great time with Peggy and also Chris mm-hmm. and Greg. Yep. Yeah, it was so fun seeing them. And it was just... it was just perfect it worked out perfect it was so funny we got back on the road and headed up the east coast first stop wilmington north carolina Mm -hmm. where i was able to see my sister ellen yes ellen Ellen and and ray Ray. Mm -hmm. they were there and they showed us carolina beach yes it's an amazing beach. beautiful place yep we stayed there and visited with them and Mm -hmm. we got a phone call Mm -hmm. from jim and melinda mantell yes saying that they had bought an RV yeah, and they were going to sell everything Mm -hmm. and get on the road and do what we're doing, Mm -hmm. travel around America in an RV. Mm -hmm. Because they were in New Bern, North Carolina at the time. And the RV was was in Wilmington. In Wilmington. They said, you could just go over and see it if you want. We were in Wilmington. We were driving down the road and there it was. Yeah, there was their RV. We saw it at the dealership. It was like, oh my gosh, it was so (laughs) cool. (laughs) They came down a couple of days later and and picked picked up up the RV Mm -hmm. and headed back up to their place. Mm -hmm. So that was a fun little experience. Yeah, that was cool. And we headed up to New Bern and hung out there for a while Mm -hmm. at a KOA. And New Bern's a great area. It is. It's really a lot of fun. Very nice. There was a restaurant that Jim and Melinda took us to. I wish I knew the name of it. I can't remember the name of it either, but it was in a gas station. Now, I got to tell you, (laughs) if you said, hey, we're going to a gas station, there's a restaurant, we're going to have some dinner, I'd say, that ain't going to happen. But this was fantastic. We had some sort of a shrimp dish. A shrimp basket. It it was the shrimp basket. Yes, it was so good. It was fantastic. (laughs) So, if anybody ever tells you eating in a gas station is not good, they're wrong. Right. (laughs) It was fantastic. Yeah. Well, we spent a few nights Mm -hmm. with Jim and Melinda Mm -hmm. in an RV camp. They wanted to kind of test out their Their new new RV. RV, So, we hung out with them for a little bit. That was fun. Yes. And we're planning on meeting up with them again. Right. Maybe out west in Arizona. Yeah. So then we made our way Virginia to Beach. Virginia Beach. In Virginia Beach. We went there for two reasons. Number one, it's a cool place to go. Mm-hmm. Number two, that was where we could get our second vaccination shot. Yep. We got our first one in Abilene, Texas the yep. month before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, hey, you know, we'll take a shot anywhere. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, we went to um, Virginia Beach where the F-18s fly over, Mm -hmm. the military aircraft, the uh, Navy, they always do maneuvers there. We were in an RV park. It was called Holiday Travel L. Right. And the airport runway was not too far from where we were in the park, and they were going over. If you love military aircraft. Oh, my gosh, that was so cool. It was a blast. Yeah, it was fun to see them just flying by then you got to go to the beach there and see neptune the god of the sea the Mm -hmm. big statue Mm -hmm. and there's another place in virginia beach oh mount (gasps) trashmore mount trashmore would you believe it was actually an abandoned landfill and they turned it into a park a million people a year come and visit this place yeah they did this back (laughs) in 1974 right it's like about 165 acres it's there's a lake on it yeah yeah i wouldn't drink the water but (laughs) it's huge and it's really funny because i was reading up on this Uh and i have some facts here so it's like 60 feet high wow 800 feet long it has a children's playground a skate park four volleyball areas lots of walking trails a million visitors a year like Mm -hmm. you said yeah but in warmer weather the area still occasionally smells of garbage (laughs) (laughs) We didn't smell anything, but... No. Well, it wasn't warm when we were there. It was kind of cool, but... 
Isn't that funny? Another place we went on the East Coast that we really loved was Williamsburg. Oh, yeah, Williamsburg. That was That was beautiful. a beautiful place. I'd never been there. Very, I love the colonialness yeah, of it. Colonial America. Yeah. And we met uh, Karen and Robert. Oh, yeah, at the RV Park. They were and so the nice. the dog that would not stop barking at me. Oh, Wiley. Wiley's a cute dog. He loved me. He didn't oh. like you, but he loved me. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> <laughs> then we went through D.C. Traffic like you wouldn't believe yeah it's like going through los angeles yeah went through dc and we stayed in hagerstown on a tributary of the potomac river Mm -hmm. at a koa which was gorgeous oh it was it was beautiful but they actually have a towpath trail in hagerstown yeah they do oh it's beautiful can ride your bike it's about 125 miles long yeah i mean it's humongous we didn't ride that long but he fell in the mud in that park yeah in the mud yeah that was well actually i got off the bike I was hiking down the river on these stairs. Metal it, stairs full of mud. Yeah, and it had rained the night before. Yeah, so he came up the stairs and... <laughs> <laughs> Fell in that damn mud. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was hilarious. Because I'm watching him thinking, he's going to fall. That's going to be slippery. Well, the Sure thing enough, is, he did. Yeah, she goes, oh, you're not going to go down there, are you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to get a shot of the river here. Come All on, right. you know. And well, then it was I, like, I, I told you. I know. I was ready with my camera because I knew you were going to fall. Yeah, you did. You got a good picture of me. <laughs> I did. Then it was on to Ohio. So I had to get my driver's license renewed. And we also had to register and license the RV because mm-hmm. you can do that in any state. Yeah. A lot of people who do this full time will register their vehicle in South Dakota or Texas or Florida where the taxes are lower. There, those states actually make it easy for you to become a resident. We decided to look a little bit deeper. And this is something you may want to consider if you buy an RV or an expensive trailer or whatever vehicle you buy out of state. We came back to Ohio and registered and paid more tax in Ohio, but we did it because we were going to pay a lower rate for insurance. Such a low rate that it really beat any kind of a tax break or anything else. It pays for itself. In the first year, I think it saved us $500. Yeah. Because insurance rates in South Dakota, Texas, and Florida are double Mm -hmm. what they are in Ohio. Yeah. And this year, when we renew our insurance, we're going to be saving even more. Yeah. And every year after. So Mm -hmm. Ohio was the right decision for us. Might be different for you or anybody else, but for us. Right. For us, it worked. And we stayed in Ohio, saw some friends and family. Yeah, it was nice to be back home and visit everybody. It really was. Mm -hmm. Then we got back on the road with our brand new RV. Jeff, I didn't think we were supposed to have any problems with a new RV. Boy, Boy, were were we wrong. It's the Rockin' the RV Life podcast with Jeff and Patty. Hear more of their adventures on the road with our next episode. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe and tell your friends.